Okay, so let's talk about velocity in orbits. <sighs> All these pixels, and I just don't seem to use them. So, um, here's where we're going to come in and use um, Kepler's laws of motion, in particular his second law of motion, which you recall is the idea that an object which is moving in orbit around a, a heavier object like the Sun and Jupiter is um, sweeping out equal areas in equal time. So let's talk about the consequence of that by um, applying some mathematics that was not available at the time. Specifically, the sum of the torques is equal to the time derivative of the angular momentum, as long as everything's going around the same axis. Um, what's nice about these um, uh, pictures is they allow me to talk about the LA and what it means um, when I break up into the center of mass motion and when I break it up into spin. In this case, um, L center of mass is L from the axis to the center of mass. Um, and that then is the distance r a to the center of mass of the object in question. We're going to assume the sun is stationary. Cross the momentum. So we can notice that there is a momentum for this object and that there is a radius to it. So what's in purple here is going from the axis of rotation um, to the center of mass of the outer body. The spin, oops, the spin is equal to I omega. And what the spin handles is the, um, rotation of the planet. So, torques are responsible for both of these actions, both how the moment of inertia of the system changes in the center of mass motion of the spin, and the overall big motion of the planet as it goes around um, the sun. Okay. We're also in a position of remembering that... Um, there is the force of gravity acting on this body towards the um, sun. So if we calculate the torque, it's going to be the radius crossed into the force. So, notice that um, if I use um, as my direction just the uh, radius that is given by the purple line, then I'm going to have the radius to the planet. I'm going to have the force of that and... 
R is in the R hat direction, the force is in the negative R hat direction. All of this is moot because this term here equals zero. So in a, in a simple two-body planetary system, um, there are no torques on the system. Okay, what does tor no torques mean? No torques means the conservation of energy. So that means that um, that the R cross P, the LA, the center of mass, at any location in the orbit has to equal R cross P at um, any other oops, change in the orbital location. Okay. So what's nice about this now is um, the radius is going to depend upon location, and so will the momentum. Furthermore, the two cross products of these guys are going to point in the same direction. They have to. Uh, the object is making its same direction around the uh, sun, so no matter how you calculate R cross P, um, you will find that R and P change, but the direction is always, um, in our case, upward. So I'm free to just write this as R and P around delta 1 is R and P around delta 2. So if we do something quick on the side, uh, let's do um, circular orbits. Um, that means R over delta 1 is the same as R in that next interval of time, or we can rewrite this as then um, R M V equals, uh, I'm sorry, this is all at one, one, one. R M V at twos. And the nice thing about circular orbits is that we're going to lose the R. The mass of the satellite doesn't matter compared to what's going on. And we get the surprising result that in the lack of, if we have a circular gravitational orbit, we have uniform circular motion. So while V1 is equal to V2, um, we're also going to be able to find that there's going to be a center pointing acceleration equal to V squared over R. All right. So let's not do circular orbits. Um, let's get back on the main track and talk about ellipses just in the most briefest sense. Um, in this case, as a ratio, that the distance over a time interval 2 and mass velocity over object 2 has to equal R delta 1 mass delta 1. There's no reason why I flip different sides of the axis. Anyways, for ellipses, the mass is again going to cancel out. And we will see that um, the radii
of your elliptical orbit is equal to, um, uh, so let's see, I divided by R1, that left V1 on top, and then we have to divide by V on the other side, and we get that. So from our understanding of conservation of angular momentum, we get a relationship between um, what is your velocity in orbit and the orbital distances. So the last thing I want to talk about is um, the idea of putting this information together uh, to talk about how we actually change orbits in um, reality. I mean, I love sci-fi, but uh, uh, no.